Hello and welcome to Acupressure Wednesday. I'm Alexa Holsey from Encircle Acupuncture in Nashville. Thanks for joining us. Today we are talking about the thyroid. This is a request from one of our viewers. So we'll be talking about acupressure for the thyroid today. We'll be using points on the ears and some points on the lower limbs as well. So we're gonna start with uh, just a typical warm up that we normally do. So everybody just take a comfortable seat. You want your feet flat on the floor and a nice neutral spine and pelvis and just breathe comfortably for a few breaths. I'm gonna close my eyes. You can keep your eyes open, do whatever's comfortable for you. And just check in with your body. Just try to not worry about whatever's going on in the background, like that barking dog. Just check in with your body and see how you're feeling. Are you holding stress anywhere? Are you holding tension? Does anything not feel right? Just take a few, few breaths and see how you're feeling today. And we'll check back in at the end of our session. I feel pretty good today. Got a little bit of tension in my, in my mid back between my shoulder blades, but otherwise I'm feeling okay. All right, so let's do a gathering exercise to gather in some chi from our surroundings. We're gonna use this chi in our session. So for this gathering exercise, you can do this seated or standing. I'm gonna stand up, but you do what's comfortable for you. And you want to have your feet about hip width apart and if you're standing have a little bend in your knees we don't want any locked knees and you're just going to inhale and as you inhale you're going to um, raise your um, arms up overhead with your palms facing up so inhale and then as you exhale you're going to lower your palms Face down and bring your palms to rest on your lower abdomen. So let's do this a few times. Inhale. And exhale. And as you're inhaling, you want to just think about gathering in energy or chi from your environment, your surroundings, and bringing it into your lower center of energy here on your lower abdomen. This is your lower Dan Tian. Inhale and exhale. Let's do that a couple more times. Just gather in as much chi as you need. There's plenty to go around. Exhale and one more. Inhale and exhale. Okay, now all of that chi that we just gathered, we want to now direct this out to our fingertips and our hands. So let's rub our hands together and feel all that chi being directed towards your palms and your fingertips. Your hands are gonna to start to feel nice and warm and tingly. Your skin might change colors. All right, so we have some chi directed to our hands and we're ready to do some acupressure. So again, today we're talking about the thyroid and I'm gonna show you some acupressure that you can do for any type of thyroid imbalances hypothyroid or hyperthyroid, these points are gonna work um, no matter what your thyroid condition is. Or if you suspect that you might have a thyroid issue, these are good just for overall balancing. So the thyroid is a gland in your throat and it secretes two hormones, T3 and T4. And these hormones uh, have really far reaching effects on the body, they're essential for growth and development um, they um, help to regulate your uh, thermoregulation in the body, so heat regulation. They, um, they regulate cell metabolism, tissue differentiation, energy production. These hormones have really far-reaching effects. And so when your thyroid is out of balance and it's secreting either too much or not enough of these hormones, then People often feel it in multiple areas of the body. They notice in their energy level, uh, their um, heat or cold levels, um, all kinds of things. We'll talk about that more. Um, but first I'm gonna show you some ear points that you can use 
for any type of thyroid imbalances, like I said, hyper or hypothyroid, the ears are great because they help the body self-regulate. And so when you stimulate ear points, it helps to have a homeostatic effect on the body. So I'm gonna show you some of these points on the ears. You can use either just your fingertips or your fingernails to add pressure to some of these points, or you can also use ear seeds, and I'm gonna show you that as well. So first, we have an ear, and I'm gonna show you four of these points on the ear that will help with thyroid imbalances. So the first point is this point here. This point is called Shen Men, and it is located in this part of the ear, which we call the triangular fossa. So it's in this upper part of the ear. There's an indentation here that's kind of a triangle shape. And the way to find Shen Men is that you sort of bisect this triangular fossa in half and then divide it into thirds. Let me actually draw that on there. Hang on. So if you divide it in half this way and then into thirds, your Shen Men is in this bottom corner. Um, so it is on my ear right there and right there. And I'm going to show you how to use ear seeds too. So Shen Men is a great point. We use it all the time with acupuncture at the clinic and Shen Men means spirit in Chinese. And so we call this, the, in Men means gate. So we call this the spirit gate. It's a great point for stress for relaxation, for calming the mind. Um, it, ha it has a good effect on brain health as well. So here's an ear seed. So today I'm using these darker skin tone ear seeds so that you can see them um, easily on my skin. So ear seeds used to only come in one color, which was light, and now um, they're Ear seeds are being made for all different skin tones, which is wonderful. We got these from the Black Acupuncturist Association, and you can buy their ear seeds online, or we have them for sale at the clinics too. We'll put up links so that you know where to get ear seeds. So I'm using these darker skin tone ones so you can see them on me. Um, so here's the triangular fossa. It's, it's easy to um, do ear seeds with a pair of tweezers. Just peel it off of the little, uh, the little um, Thing that it's on and then right about there is ear shen men once you get it on there then give it a little squeeze to make sure that it really sticks well there it is also i forgot to mention this but it's helpful if you do a little alcohol swab on your ears first just to clean off your skin's natural oils and that's going to help the ear seeds to stick better so they come on this thing that looks like this this plastic thing i like to just peel up a little corner and then grab it. I just trimmed my nails so I cannot get this thing up. So I like to peel up a little corner and then grab it with the tweezers to peel it off the rest of the way. There it is. And I'm going to do it on this side too. And there is ear shen men. If you don't have ear seeds, just press around and find a tender spot and then just kind of dig in there with your fingernail. Now, ear seeds are nice because you can keep these on for a few days. And so then you just press the seeds a few times a day, take some deep breaths while you're doing it. And that helps to have some ongoing stimulation of those points. Okay, so that's ear shen min. Next, we're going to do the ear brain point. This is also sometimes called the subcortex point or the thalamus point. And that point is located right here on this part of the ear that bumps out. So this part of the ear, the outside is called the helix. And then this inside arch is called the anti-helix. So right here, there's a, there's a bulge on the anti-helix. That's where the brain point is. And these ear points often mimic anatomy in our body. So we can think of this bulge as sort of the bulge of our, um, our brain in our head and in our cranium. So I'm gonna show you that on myself. So this, um, this point, the brain point or the subcortex point, this affects the endocrine system because it regulates the thalamus and the hypothalamus. So here's this nice little bump out here. And I'm just gonna st stick this seed 
right on top. If you don't get it right in the exact spot the first time, you can always just move it and see that is not right at all. Now there it is, pretty much where that point is. It takes a little practice to do these on yourself, but there's that brain point. So yeah, anyway, the, the brain point regulates the um, thalamus and the hypothalamus, which in turn affects the thyroid. The brain point is also a great point for pain. So we use this a lot at the clinic for pain conditions. So there's that, there's that bulge, got my seed. Sometimes it's actually easier on some of the points to just use your fingers instead of the tweezers. So there's that, ooh, that one's tender on me. Wow, that side is super tender. That's how you know you get the right spot. When you can, when you press that seed and you really feel it, then you're in a good spot. Okay, so that's a brain point. Next point we're gonna do is the endocrine point. And that is right here. So you can see on the drawing that this part is shaded. And that just means that it's like really deep into a, a recessed area of the ear and not on a part that's more readily visible. So um, right here is the endocrine point. It's very kind of lower spot where, where, this, um, oops, where this sort of notch is in the antihelix, but it's not on the antihelix, it's deep in the depression. So the endocrine point, this is also sometimes called the internal secretions point, and this helps the endocrine system achieve homeostasis. Um, so uh, really what we're always looking for in, with acupuncture and Chinese medicine is balance. And again, the ear points help the body to self-regulate. So it's going to help the body to make the adjustments it needs to do to find balance. So whether you're hypo, hyperthyroid, these points are going to help. And especially this endocrine point. So it's like way deep into this, um, into this depression. So you might not, oh, hang on. I have a runaway ear seat. <laughs> sometimes uh, they get in the wrong spot and then sometimes they get caught in your hair. So um, let's try that one again. When I do this endocrine point, you might not even be able to see it on me because it's so deep in this, um, in this depression. I'm gonna use my finger. That might be a little easier. Yeah. So there is that endocrine point. I don't know if you can even see it, but it's really deep in that depression. I'm gonna do the other side as well. And again, this will um, help achieve homeostasis. And so what this endocrine point really does is it either raises or lowers the secretions from all any of the endoc endocrine glands. So if any of the endocrine glands are not secreting the level of hormones that they should, then this endocrine point helps to regulate that. Now, if your glands are all doing great, they're just secreting things as they should, then that's fine. You can still do this point. It's not going to throw anything out of balance. It just sends a signal to the body to draw its attention. Okay, and then finally, we have the thyroid point on the ear, and that is located on the anti-helix here. And here, see where the brain point is here? The thyroid point is gonna be a little bit above that on the anti-helix. Oftentimes, there's a notch on the anti-helix uh, where this thyroid point is. So um, just feel around and see if you can find a tender spot. And I'm gonna do this thyroid point. And so this point has a similar function to the endocrine point in that it helps to um, regulate the, um, the levels of secretions, but this point is just really targeted for the thyroid. So that thyroid point, also tender on me, is right about there. So one of the things that's challenging with the ears is that the ears are so small that um, that sometimes it can be hard to know if we're in the right spot and the points are so close together. Um, so if you're not sure if you're in the right spot or not, just play around with it. There's that thyroid point. You're not gonna do any harm if you're on the wrong point. And then if you're on the right point, you'll usually feel some sensitivity. Okay, so now we've got all of these uh, ear seeds Shenmin, there's the thyroid, there's 
the brain and then that endocrine point is deep into that depression there. Ear seeds are great. You can leave them on for a few days and give them a squeeze from time to time and it will help to keep stimulating those points. If you don't have ear seeds, just use your fingers or your fingernails. Um, if you want to buy some, we sell them at our clinics and we'll also put links to where you can buy them online. And it's great that they come in these different skin tones. All right, so those are some points for the ears for the thyroid. And now I'm going to show you some points on the lower leg as well. So in traditional Chinese medicine, we really just view the thyroid imbalances as an imbalance of yin and yang. So like I said earlier, the thyroid helps with thermoregulation in the body. So when the thyroid is out of balance, oftentimes you'll have symptoms of either sensitivity to heat or sensitivity to cold. Um, that's, a, that's a very typical sign of thyroid issues. So, um, and in Chinese medicine, we view that as yin and yang being out of balance. Your yang is your warming heat aspect of the body, and your yin is your cooling cold aspect of the body. And so when there's too much of one and not enough of the other, you're going to have sensitivity to either heat or cold. And we'll talk of some more specifics about how that manifests with um, the different thyroid disorders. So first, uh, point I'm going to show you is on on the lower leg. This is spleen six, and I'm going to tilt my camera down here so you can see. Spleen six is located on the inside of the lower leg, so the spleen channel is on the inside or the medial side of the leg. And to find spleen six, we want to find this bone here, this medial malleolus. And um, we're going to go about the width of four fingers above that. And right about there is spleen six. Now, spleen six is contraindicated for acupuncture in pregnancy. So if you're pregnant, just skip this point. And there's plenty of others that you can do. Now, the spleen channel is kind of directly above this bone. So if you're too far back, that's the wrong channel. That's the kidney channel. And if you're too far forward, that's also the wrong channel. That's the liver. So just kind of right here on, um, on the same level as this malleolus. So four fingers, spleen six. It is usually tender on most people. Um, and just rub that spot in circles. Now spleen six is a great point because it's, at, it's the intersection of the spleen, the liver, and the kidney channels. So it's kind of like getting three points all in one spot. I'm gonna show you on my other leg. And so here is our medial malleolus. We're on the medial or the inside of the leg. We're going to measure with four fingers above there and right about there. Don't be too far back or forward. Just right about there is spleen six. We often use spleen six for any kind of hormonal issues because it does affect the spleen, the liver, and the kidney channels. So the kidney is important because the kidney in traditional Chinese medicine is responsible for growth and development and really the whole life cycle. That's related to the thyroid because the thyroid is also helps to um, helps with growth and development. The liver is important because the liver is responsible for smooth flow of qi throughout the body and for the unfolding of of body cycles like the menstrual cycle or um, the digestive cycle. And all of these uh, feedback loops of the endocrine system, those are really under the direction of the liver in traditional Chinese medicine. And then the spleen is important because the spleen helps ensure healthy digestion. And when we're getting nutrients from the food that we eat, then um, that supports the liver and the kidneys. And um, then we're gonna have overall a healthier endocrine system as well. So that's spleen six. Next point is gonna be on the kidney channel. So kidney three is also located in relation to the medial malleolus. So you have your medial, we're again on the inside. Here's your ankle bone, the malleolus. Here's your Achilles tendon. It is right in between those two. So right here, kidney three. So here's spleen six, here's kidney three. Kidney three is one of my favorite points to do for acupressure on myself. It just feels great. Anytime I rub it, I like to rub it in circles. 
And kidney three is a really important point for tonifying the kidneys. It tonifies all aspects of the kidneys, chi, blood, yin, yang. Um, and again, the kidneys are responsible for growth and development and the life cycle. So it's really important to support the kidneys in, with any kind of endocrine disorder and especially with the thyroid. So I'm gonna show you on this side as well. Here's spleen six, which we located a minute ago. Here's kidney three between this bone and the Achilles tendon right on the level of the bone. So don't go too far up or down, just right here. That's kidney three. So spleen six and kidney three can be used for any type of thyroid disorder, hypothyroid, hyperthyroid, um, because they have a self-regulatory effect. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of points that you can use for specific thyroid conditions. The first is going to be kidney six. And um, this is located, so here's kidney three behind the malleolus. So kidney six is located just below it. So just draw a line straight down and it's about the width of your thumb, about that distance. But really the best way to locate kidney six is just to feel around and find a tender spot. Now kidney six has the action of tonifying the yin and clearing heat. And so we use this point for hyperthyroid because hyperthyroid means there's too much thyroid hormone being secreted. Um, and that often manifests as signs of excess heat and deficient yin or excess yang and deficient yin. So symptoms of hyperthyroid are going to be um, sensitivity to heat. Um, sometimes a patient will feel anxiety. Sometimes there'll be excessive sweating rapid heartbeat, and unintentional weight loss. These are all signs that there is excess yang in the body and not enough yin. So, oops, sorry. So kidney six is gonna nourish the yin and clear out excess yang. So on this side, here's the malleolus. Just draw a line straight down. Oh my gosh, that is so tender on me. And there's kidney six. All right, now for the, uh, for the flip side of that, for hypothyroid, we want to tonify yang and um, bring the, uh, the yin um, into balance because um, hypothyroid is generally a condition of excess yin and insufficient yang. So we want to bring the yang level uh, up to balance with the yin. So we're going to use kidney seven for that. These points are all really close to each other. So kidney three is right here. Kidney seven is about the width of two fingers above kidney three. So right about there, okay? And again, this is between the malleolus and the Achilles tendon. So don't, it's not here and it's not back here. It's right there in the middle. That's kidney seven. So kidney seven has more of an action for um, tonifying the yang and um, and generating some more heat. So if the heat is insufficient in the body. So hypothyroid means that your thyroid is not secreting enough of the hormones. And this will manifest as feeling fatigue, weakness, sensitivity to cold. There can be hair loss, weight gain, um, swelling, depression, these are all signs that the yang is insufficient and the yang needs to be supported. Um, so I'm gonna show you on the other side as well. Here's kidney three, and then about the width of two fingers above that is kidney seven. So as I said, these points are all really close to each other. Here's spleen six, here's kidney seven. So spleen six is just a little more forward and higher. Spleen, uh, kidney seven is just a little lower and more um, towards the back, towards the Achilles tendon. Here's kidney three, and here is kidney six. So again, you can use spleen six and kidney three. Spleen six, kidney three, they have a self-regulating effect. So hypo, hy, hyper or hypothyroid, you can use those. For hyper, Per thyroid, where there's an excess of heat and we want to clear out the heat and nourish the yin, we're gonna use kidney six. And when there's hypothyroid, when we want to um, tonify 
the yang and have a warming effect, then we're gonna use kidney seven, which is right here. And again, the best way to find these points is to just experiment. Press around, um, find spots that are tender, and when you do find those tender spots, then spend a little time massaging them. You can press, you can massage in circles, um, you'll, you'll figure out what feels good to you because your body will be sending you signals throughout this acupressure session. And again, don't forget the points on the ears that have a self-regulating effect. You can just use your fingers or your fingernails or ear seeds. They're a lot of fun. All right, so let's end today where we started and just check in and see how we're feeling comfortable seat, feet on the floor about hip width apart, and just take some comfortable breaths. I'm going to close my eyes. You do what's comfortable for you. And just check in and see how your body's feeling. See if anything feels different. I'm feeling some tingling where I was pressing on those kidney points. So that's a good sign. That means that those points are still working. I moved some chi and now my body is adjusting and resetting in response to that pressure I gave. So that's a good thing. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have suggestions for other topics that you would like to see covered here, just let us know in the comments. Hope everyone has a great day and we will see you again next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.